Hello everyone, this is Alex Fleury for Real World and the Dots. This uh, tutorial will be about where is that bloody canal. And I say bloody, I know it's not very elegant to say that, but sometimes you feel like saying that. I mean, where is the canal? You're looking for it and you can't find it. Now, I mentioned to you in a previous video that this is what we have left as hard, as difficult, in endo is locating that orifice in teeth that have a calcified bulk chamber. Really, this is what we have difficult. And the solution I mentioned to you before is reviewing anatomy and using the right tools. Recommended to you the ehuman.com. And I think that's a great source of information. I think everybody should check on that. Now, finding canals is, of course, closely related to understanding how many canals you're supposed to find in each tooth. Now, thinking that mandibular incisors and canines and mandibular premolars have one canal is wrong because they're going to find a second canal there in the lingual of these teeth very often, 25-30% of the time. So remembering that, I think it's important. And checking it on the tooth atlas, I think it's easy. Now, I will use an, as an example this tooth here. This is a maxillary first molar. And I think it's a great example because in a maxillary first molar, you have this palatal root here, which is fairly easy. It's large, has maybe sometimes a little apical curvature. Then you have this distal canal, which is medium size, you know, medium difficulty, if you will. And then you have this mesial buccal canal, which is very hard. It's curved, it's tight. Even in young patients, it's pretty curved and tight. So... And then you have this guy here, this little fellow, the MB2 or PMB, whatever you want to call this fourth canal, is very difficult. So you're having the same tooth, several examples of, of anatomy, and this can be transported basically to any tooth. So I like to use this as an example for finding canals. Now, you need to remember in this particular example how many canals you're supposed to find. Well, latest studies on anatomy using actually sophisticated cone, uh, CT scan, micro CT images will show you that there is a fourth canal in this guy here, at least one more canal that needs a buccal root about 96% of the time. So you can just say it's there. You need to find it. You don't always find it, but it's there. So where is that? Well, if you check your anatomy, it's going to be slightly mesial to a line that connects these two guys, and I, these two, the mesial buccal and the palatal. Now, I don't mean this in a, in a sophisticated way. This is really easy to see that, because the mesial root is altogether tilted to the mesial. Then, of course, that canal is always going to be here. And you need to remember that, because this is where you're going to go about digging for that extra canal. Now, oftentimes, and again, this is a tooth, uh, an image from a tooth atlas, oftentimes you find that little orifice. I mean, it's right there. I got it, Alex. It's right there. Now, you get a number 10 hand file, and you travel, say, half one millimeter, and you bump into a dead stop. Why does that happen? If you look a little bit closer on this example here, again, it's a real tooth. Here's a palatal root there. Here's the mesial root. We're facing a mesial root from a mesial aspect. This is your mesial buccal canal, and this is your MB2. And this, you almost don't want to look. There's a lot of stuff in between. Here is your orifice of the MB2. The orifice of the MB2 in this particular case branches out in several spots. So your task here is not only to find the orifice up here, but you need to find which one of these guys here will be the one that leads you to length, which will be around this area. And in order to do that, oftentimes you have to shave off dentin from the top of the orifice here, almost troughing here like when you're looking for a canal. That will guide you to the main opening, the main orifice, and that will guide you to length. Now, the way to do that troughing, removing dentin from that area is very dangerous because it's very easy to perforate them. You do not want to perforate. So... If that's the case, then using an instrument like this, which is a contra-angle, even though it's a small instrument, you can even use a long shank, a round burr, a small round burr. You can't see where you're going. So ideal to look for canals and troughing that neighborhood there is to use a system like this, a piezo-ultrasonic system, 
will gently brush away dentin from the area where you know the canal is supposed to be here. This is a maxillary first molar, that's the mesobuccal, that's the palatal. The MB2 is going to be in a line, slightly meso to a line that connect those two guys. And if you go digging in that area very gently, without risk of perforation with this instrument, you end up finding the canal more often than not. You should be able to clean shape into a, at least one more canal, that meso root of number 3 or 14, about 85% of the time, if you use an instrument like this. This is a... I like this particular unit here. This is from uh, Brassler. These guys, it's called a Varios 350, I think. Yeah, Varios 350. This instrument shoots light right at the tip, so it's an extra source of light. I think that is very cool, and it helps a lot in you know, finding canals.